here we are again. Um, we have a, it's not quite a Seaforth kilt, it's civilian uh, Mackenzie. And again, it's, that's distinguished by the fact that the, um, the overlay, the white and the red lines are a little bit narrower than Seaforth number two. Uh, this one's had a bit of moth damage. In fact, quite a bit of moth damage. We can see there's a nip here at the on the bottom of the outer apron. Um, there's quite a bit across the back of the pleats here. And this is curious because the elastic looks like it's been eaten too. And I, I didn't think um, I didn't think moths went after elastic. But as you can see, yeah, there's there's a job of work here to. To stabilize this. Fortunately, all of this is on the inside and it's not visible on when when the kilt will next be worn. The real eye opener though is this. And this isn't the first or second or third time that I've seen this. Um, moths attacking one part of the kilt specifically. We've also seen this in, in old suits where the moths will concentrate on the armpits of a coat and the groin of the the crotch of the trousers. And uh, the what appears to be the case, again, this is third or fourth of these that I've seen. Um, you need to shake it more than three times, guys, because this is the result of the moths are attracted to, frankly, remnants of urine when uh, splashed onto the kilt after after doing your business. Because there's um, well, there's some proteins there, there's uh, salts, some some vitamins, I suppose. But that's where the moths have concentrated for that reason. So I'm thinking in future, wearing his kilt as much as I do, I think I'm getting in, into the habit of, oh, every once in a while, I can't tell you what that every once in a while is going to be, whether it's if I decide to do it monthly or not, of maybe just flushing the inside apron with, with clean water and just hang or laying it out to dry just to dissipate, remove those droplets, which as we can see, when left in a kilt can cause some real damage. Thank you.